this unit is all about the speed and time dimension of chemical reactions, and specifically the field of chemical kinetics. We're interested in the speed of chemical reactions for two reasons. The first is more straightforward. We just want to know how long should we expect a reaction to take. In fact, reaction times span a huge range of time scales, all the way down from the nanosecond, microsecond, millisecond scale up to years, decades, centuries, right? And so we want to get a sense of how we think about and express and measure the rates of reactions so that we know how long a given reaction will take, more or less. And that's pretty straightforward. The second reason goes a little bit deeper and has to do with how the reaction actually occurs. What are the bond making and breaking events that occur in the midst of the reaction, for example? How do atoms and electrons rearrange themselves as the reactants convert to products? Kinetics can give us insight into this as well, and it's what's known as the reaction mechanism. And so toward the end of this unit, we're gonna connect reaction mechanism with kinetic data and be able to use kinetic data to distinguish between reaction mechanisms, for example. As you move on to more advanced courses in organic and physical chemistry, you'll see reaction mechanisms again. And the focus, especially in organic chemistry, is the actual movements of electrons, bonds made, bonds broken, the reactive intermediates involved, so on and so forth. Chemical kinetics is the foundation of those theoretical ideas. And so it's worth keeping in mind And this connection between kinetics and mechanism is a theme throughout your chemical education that will come back again and again. So in this particular unit, we're going to look at seven different sections. The first defines what's really the key quantity of chemical kinetics, which is the reaction rate. This is a measure of how quickly the reaction proceeds in units of concentration or partial pressure or some other measure of concentration per unit time. So we'll talk about the various types of reaction rates. There's actually a couple of subtleties here and how we think about those mathematically, the units involved, how we can represent them on a graph, and that kind of thing. In the second section, we'll look at experimental variables affecting reaction rates, most specifically concentration, the concentrations of the reactants, and temperature. And there's some intuitive ideas here that you're probably already familiar with from everyday life. We're gonna put a mathematical spin on those intuitive ideas, and the basis of that math is really a theoretical model of the temperature and concentration dependence of the reaction rate. And speaking of that concentration dependence, that's the focus of the third and fourth sections. In the third section, we're going to introduce the concept of the rate law or differential rate law, which relates the reaction rate expressed as a derivative to the concentrations of the reactants raised to powers times a constant called the rate constant. And we'll explore the math behind that and what the rate law can tell us and how we can apply the rate law in that section. To get into the fourth section, we're gonna take the differential rate law and integrate it to give the integrated rate law. And the integrated rate law, as complicated as it sounds, is simply the concentration over time, the time dependence of the concentration of a reactant. That's what the integrated rate law is, nothing more, nothing less. It's what we expect a graph of concentration versus time to look like for a chemical reactor. Collision theory is a theoretical molecular model that underpins how we think about chemical kinetics, why it's temperature dependent, why it's concentration dependent. In section six, we'll make that connection between reaction mechanisms and kinetics beginning to understand how we can use kinetic data, specifically the rate law, to distinguish between possible mechanisms. And in section seven, we'll look at the very important concept of catalysis, this idea that a relatively small amount of a substance can accelerate a chemical reaction by modifying its mechanism and lowering the activation energy of the reaction. This is a very exciting and very active area of current research because accelerating chemical reactions, obviously, gives us access to valuable products in a relatively short time frame. Let's begin by defining what we mean by the chemical reaction rate and look at the various places where chemical reaction rate pops up. Let's start with a definition for the rate of reaction. 
rate of reaction is the change in the amount of a reactant or product or change in concentration of a reactant or product per unit time. And this quantity is positive by convention. And this is worth keeping in mind because as we think about change, we can think about a concentration increasing or decreasing. And generally, if we're looking at a product, for example, coming in, the reaction rate will naturally be positive. If we're thinking about a reactant disappearing, however, the change in concentration is negative. But a negative sign is used to ensure that the rate of reaction is positive by convention. So take, for example, the reaction we see on this slide. 2H2O2 in aqueous solution goes to H2O liquid and O2 gas. And we can think about reaction rate or rate of reaction in terms of any of these three species. For example, we could think about the rate in terms of H2O appearing or in terms of O2 appearing or in terms of H2O2 disappearing. For example, the rate of consumption of H2O2 between two time points, let's call them T2 and T1, is equal to the negative of the H2O2 concentration at T2 minus the H2O2 concentration at T1. This is a change in the concentration of the H2O2 between those two time points divided by T2 minus T1. And this, of course, is a change in time between the two time points. So rate is a change in concentration divided by a change in time. And notice that here, because H2O2 is a reactant, this delta H2O2 is a negative value, has a negative value. H2O2 is disappearing because it's a reactant as the reaction proceeds. We can also express the reaction rate in terms of the production of H2O or the production of O2. So analogous reaction rate expressions could be written, for example, for the production of H2O by writing the change in the concentration of H2O divided by the change in time, or for the production of O2 as the change in the concentration of O2 divided by the change in time. These are all reaction rates, and they're not necessarily numerically equal to each other for stoichiometric reasons that we'll dig into here in a second. But each of these we could think of as a measure of the rate of reaction. It's a change in the amount or concentration of a reactant or product per unit time. Now, rate often varies with reactant concentration. We alluded to this earlier. Concentration is one of these factors that affects reaction rates. So as a reactant disappears, for example, we may see the reaction rate change. And we see that in this table. Notice that the reaction rate, the rate of decomposition is different early in the reaction when we have quite a bit of H2O2 there, than later in the reaction where most of the H2O2 has gone. Let's derive one of these rates of decomposition listed on the right-hand side of this table using the data that's given. So let's look, for example, at this rate, 0.0833, moles per liter per hour. Notice the units, first of all, before we dig into this. Moles per liter per hour, the units of the rate. A change in concentration, moles per liter, per time, per hour. So looking, for example, at that rate, which we called A, we can write the rate of decomposition of H2O2 as a change in concentration divided by a change in time. And notice this number is going to come out negative. So what we should do is take this whole expression and throw a negative sign out front since we're talking about decomposition of a reactant. And the resulting value is going to be 0 0.0833 moles per liter or molar per hour. And those units indeed match what's in the top right of the table that you see here. We can do the same for this second rate expression in the table using an extremely analogous approach. We're going to again use the idea that the rate of decomposition is the negative of the change in concentration divided by the change in time. The change in time is still six hours since in going from the initial 
time point to the final time point, the delta or change is six hours. And the change in concentration is 0 0.250 minus 0 0.5, but with a negative sign out front, let's go ahead and write that as 0 0.500 minus 0 0.250 moles per liter. And the result here, if we go through the math, is half the rate at point A, or 0 0.0417 molar per hour. So fairly straightforward calculations if we understand conceptually that a rate is a change in concentration per change in time. And notice again, the rate depends on the concentration of H2O2. As that goes down, the rate appears to go down.